morning again to everybody. Good morning. We're in Mark again. Uh, we'll be for just a few more Sundays. Mark chapter 13. Sorry about that. Mark 13. And before we're done, we'll probably have to talk through the whole chapter and I'll read the whole chapter. And this is, the title is Diligent for the Duration. And we talked we talk about this several times in Mark. That's probably the first. Oh, and before you do that, welcome back, safe and sound, guys. Yeah. Probably have stories, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but Mark was one of the first Gospels, or the first Gospel probably written. Uh, Peter had been the source since he'd been with Christ from the time after his baptizing until his resurrection. John Mark is the author, the writer uh, for the these, uh, for Peter. It has three big purposes. One is just to get the gospel out there. This is a big, something big. We need to get it recorded. And so it, is, it was written down uh, is to show Christ as a servant, uh, teaching others to be servants and a servant of God. And then it's that Jesus is the Christ. That's the kind of high point in the middle. Uh, he is the Christ, the Messiah, the God with us. It repeats themes. It starts out, Christ is identified uh, by baptism. Uh, he calls his disciples. Then he casts out demons. He teaches. He does miracles. Uh, he does a miracle of giving sight to the blind. And then the uh, announcement that he is the Christ, the curse. So it's, he identifies with them and he's, he's announced as, as the Messiah. Then after that, uh, there's a transfiguration. He uh, reintroduced again. That's the second, again, the second half. He uh, casts out demons. He teaches. He does miracles. He, he causes the blind to see. And there's a triumphal entry where he's announced as the Messiah. So that's, that comes through the, the, that pattern and follows twice through the, through the book. Uh, last week, in the last couple of weeks, we've had his uh, confrontation with the, with the Jewish leaders. And he, as we, in between then and now, he asked some of his own questions. In chapter 12, he asks uh, the, some of the folks around the temple, how do the scribes say that Christ is the son of David, for David himself calls by the Holy Ghost him Lord, and says uh, to my Lord, said, and says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand, so I make thy enemies thy footstool. David therefore called him, David therefore himself calls him Lord, which then is he his son? And the common people heard it gladly, but the scribes, the Pharisees, and the religious leaders were, were in a tizzy because they had rejected him, and no amount of his preaching was going to cause them to, to re repent. And then he warns his disciples about the Pharisees. He says, beware of the scribes, which love to go to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplaces. But inside they are uh, evil. They, they devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive a greater dam damnation. And then it shows what true worship is. The, the widow comes and she offers up all that she has to the Lord. And they're, they're in the temple. The triumphant entry has occurred. And it says in chapter 13, verse 1, And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And it'd be neat, maybe, maybe in the, uh, this is completely fabricated, so don't remember it for very long, but in God's museum in heaven, he will have the temple that Solomon built, because it would be fantastic to see. The whole thing on the outside was overlaid with gold, and then inside was all cedar, and much of that was overlaid with gold. So when the sun had hit it, it would shine out fantastically. Now, that temple was destroyed by the Babylonians and rebuilt, and then uh, Herod has come in and helped them uh, build this one up a little bit more as, a, as trying to appease the Jews. So they see all these things, and it's, it's great marvel. Uh, it's like us going to, the, to Washington, D.C. or to St. Louis and, and seeing things that people built that are, are quite uh, interesting, quite fantastic, quite engineering feats. And Jesus answered and said to him, See these, seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another 
that shall not be turned down. And that, that gets the disciples' attention. And so it says, And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, over against the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when these things shall be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest or beware, take heed, lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be not troubled, for such things must need to be. But the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. So let's, let's pray. <coughs> Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this morning. Again, we thank you for your people. And Father, we pray that they would fill your spirit in their hearts today and every day. Help us to seek your face, Father, and help us to seek your will and carry it out in our daily lives. We thank you for each one here. We pray that uh, you would help us to, to be the arms, legs, the voice of, of your, your body in the community you call us to. We may be a light on a hill and that we may be the salt of the earth. I ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. So when they say, what's, you know, this temple, you said the temple's going to be destroyed. So what's, what's going to be the indication that that's getting ready to happen? And the first thing he says after they ask him is, be careful, be aware, don't let someone deceive you. Don't be led astray. So, um, and I'm, I'm probably going to get ahead of myself, it's hard not to, but when the Lord's return is going to be, is big topics for everybody, a lot of people. The only ones probably who don't think ahead of time of Christ returning are atheists, but they like it when other people uh, try to make predictions because they can say, see how foolish they are. And we'll read the verse down in here where it says no man knows the hour when, when the events will happen. Um, but uh, many people over, over all kinds of time have tried to read what Christ has said and tried to predict, and they fail. So when you leave here this morning, I'm not going to tell you, don't, don't leave me looking for this. I will not give you a time in the future at all. Because nobody knows. It's, it's, it's up to God when the end of time is. So in all of the stuff that we read, we will not know when that time is. Um, and let us be careful not to do like some people do, and everybody is the Antichrist, which we know the Antichrist is going to come before Christ returns. And he says there will be many coming in my name, those are the Antichrists. Uh, I don't know... When it started, but pretty much in my lifetime, I think every president has been named the Antichrist, and it's probably not been true. Uh, and it's usually by the other political party. Oh, it's got to be the Antichrist. And, you know, if you want to uh, hear my foibles, my, you know, where, where I, I get weak, uh, I don't think he's necessarily the Antichrist, but I think Soros is probably the false prophet or somebody. I, I think he's. he's like evil embodiment. But that's, you know, you'll remember that, you won't remember any of the message. But lest we forget what questions the disciples ask, what do they ask about? When's the temple going to be destroyed? You said the temple, we were going to see not one stone left on another. When's the temple going to be destroyed? And we know when that happened. About. Uh, I'm going to say a year, and, I, and people who are in the know better may correct me, but I think it's about 70 AD. Does that sound right? Uh, there's an uprising in, in Israel, and the Romans came in and they left it. They took the temple down, destroyed it, burned it, took the gold away, uh, stopped on the ashes. Yeah, they, they wanted the temple gone. So that was the near term uh, ful fulfillment of. of this, or the, the answer to the near-term question the disciples had, and that was, when is the, or when is the temple going to be destroyed? And did he say in 70 AD? No. He gave them this long dissertation, 
And uh, essentially, I, I will say, don't worry about it. But he's saying, don't be led astray. Don't be mistaken. Don't be taken down the wrong path. You follow truth. So all of us here, if we know Christ, we're waiting for Christ's return. When's that going to be? Don't know. Nobody knows. But in the time that we're waiting, what we need to do is make sure we follow after truth. And so that, that is the first thing he tells them. Be careful. Beware. Don't be deceived. Follow what is true. Don't go down the wrong path. Um, I don't know when anti or false Christs became vogue. It certainly was not before Christ, but uh, John was writing even by like 100 AD. He was saying there are many false Christs already. So it didn't take long after Christ's life here on earth that a whole bunch of people thought that, hey, I think I'm the Christ. And in modern times, I think this is right, I think uh, David Koresh, French Davidians, didn't he claim to be an embodiment of Christ? So even in our time today, uh, there are folks who say that they are the Christ, and they deceive many. Uh, many people were out in what, Waco, Texas, where he was, when, when they the government came in and did whatever. So, Christ is ahead of time warning them, there will be many people coming in my name. But beware, don't let them deceive you. If someone claims to be the Christ, they're wrong. Christ came, he lived, he died, and when he comes back, there will be no question that it's the Christ. So, for us, today, uh, the temple's destroyed. The temple's already been destroyed. But for us today, there's still the command that we need to be careful to not be led astray or not to go down the wrong path. Satan's a liar and the father of lies. Uh, he would like nothing better than to lead you down the wrong path. Uh, we should seek understanding and follow only what Scripture says. And uh, we'll see, uh, if not here in Romans, he said he would, Satan would even deceive believers if it was possible. So we need to be bonded tightly to Christ following after his word. So do not be led astray. Do not go down the wrong path. Do not follow the wrong source. Follow Christ, and we have him here in Scripture. Then he says, starting at verse 9, so he's still not told him when the temple's going to be destroyed. This is 33, roughly, A.D. It's going to be destroyed in 70 A.D. So he still keeps giving him advice. He says, but take heed to yourselves. Be on guard. Watch out. Take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils. And in the synagogues you shall be beaten. You shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. For when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what you will speak, neither do you premeditate, Whatsoever shall be given to you in that hour, that speak ye. For it is not you that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now the brother shall betray brother to death, and the father the son, and children shall rise up against their parents, and many, and cause, and they shall cause many to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Excuse me just a minute. I forgot to write something down, so I'm trying to refresh my memory. Okay, I'm going to keep on reading. But when they shall say, but when you shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that reads understand. Let them that are in Judea flee to the mountains. So actually, I should have stopped right there. Sorry. So, he's saying, be careful. First, follow the truth. And he's saying, be careful. One of the things that's going to happen, he says, is you will be persecuted for my sake. People will come and ask you questions. They will take you before the religious leaders in the synagogue. The, the Jews will take them. They will be taken before kings and rulers, the, the uh, um, social, the uh, political system will, will question them. And we have a tendency... All of us have a tendency to see Scripture through our own cultural backgrounds. And if we said, 
you know, just looking at our lives here in this country, are we persecuted for serving Christ? Or are we called before councils for serving Christ? We would say, no. no. But does that mean that that's not happening across the whole world? Absolutely not. Uh, if you're in China, if you're in North Korea, if you're in uh, Indonesia, if you're in Turkey, if you're in a whole host of countries, these, these things are already happening to them. And Christ is, is telling his disciples and telling us, here are some of the things, here are some of the events that are going to be happening as you wait for the return of, of Christ. And so we need to be on guard. We need to watch out because we have a target on us. We, we uh, as Christ's followers, uh, uh, it wouldn't take much. And I think we see little... Uh, flickers of persecution around us. It wouldn't take much, really, for the whole country to be against Christianity. So we need to be on guard. We need to be aware. We need to walk circumspectly. We need to look around us and uh, watch what's going on so that we know. And, and we need to worry. No. He's telling us these things ahead of time so that we do not worry. Uh, I threw a proverb in here. Uh, let me see. Go back and read it, Proverbs 24, 19. Fret not yourselves because of evil men, neither be thou envious of the wicked. So he's warning his disciples and he's warning us today, just watch out. Be ready. These bad things are going to happen. Um, I, I've, not, I've not had to serve in the military, and I'm you know, old enough now, I probably will never have to unless it's very, very, very serious. But folks who have, have been trained for battle. And even if you're trained, I'm sure there's a time of uh, terror and fear that goes through your, your minds and your hearts in battle. But as training and experience go on and on, battle becomes just a part of life. Still, still with fear, but still, you know, this is, this is what my job is. And in a Christian life, persecution is just what our job is going to be. We, we might as well get used to it and not fear. Just approach it as, as God's called us to. He says, don't, when they lead you up to these people, don't worry about it beforehand. The Holy Spirit will take care of you. He will give you the things that you need to, to know. But we do have the responsibility to know the truth and to be ready for these events to happen, to be watching We, uh, we need to know what the Word of God says. Uh, we need not to pray ourselves and, and worry ourselves too much about when Christ is going to return, because He's returning. Uh, he tells us bad things are going to happen in the meantime, so we need to be ready. But what we need to do is make sure that when things happen, we understand them in the proper way. It says, But when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, standing where standing where it ought not, let him that reads understand. I think Christ said, or the disciples said, when's the temple going to be destroyed? And Christ has answered every question except that up to this point. He says, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken by Daniel, standing where it ought not, let him that be in Judea flee to the mountains. And let him that is on the house top not go down to the house, neither enter therein, to take anything out. Let him that's in the field not turn back again, for to take up his garment. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, and pray ye not that your flight be not the winner. For in those days should be such the affliction such as was, not from the beginning of the Creator, which God created, creation, I'm sorry, which God created until this time. Neither shall be. So when the temple is destroyed, there's going to be great tribulation there in Jerusalem. Now here's the cool thing, the difficult thing, the interesting thing about prophecy. He's talking about, I think, the destruction of the temple, and he's talking about the time when he returns. So he's giving us a, a type of when things, or what things are going to be, and another type of what things are going to be, which makes it all the more probably confusing to try to understand. But uh, when you think about Isaiah's prophecies, when... Uh, He's talking to, I think it's Hezekiah, and he asked Hezekiah to ask for a sign. That doesn't sound like the right king, but one of the kings says, okay, ask me for a sign. 
And the king said, oh, I'm not going to do that. And, and Isaiah says, well, you made a mistake. The Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will conceive and bring forth a child. Well, that was a prophecy for, is it Hezekiah? Is that the right note? Ahaz. The prophecy for Ahaz, but guess what it's also a prophecy for? For the Christ coming. So prophecies usually have a couple of fulfillments, a near term and a longer term. So during the destruction of the temple, Jerusalem's going to be in turmoil, and he's warning them about that. But there's going to be another turmoil in Jerusalem when Christ comes back again. And it says, And except the Lord had shortened these days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he shall shorten the days. And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ. So he starts out saying, Many will come in my name, and will deceive many. And he's, he finishes up and says, And if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, do not believe him. For false Christs and false prophets shall rise, and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it possible, even the elect. But take heed, behold, I have foretold you. So, the last thing he's saying is, you know, beware, listen, uh, do not be deceived. Do not misunderstand the events that are happening around you. Do not uh, misinterpret the events that are going on around you. And that goes back to what I was saying about how everybody thinks everybody that they don't like is the Antichrist. That is misinterpreting the events that are going on around us. Now, uh, Doc Enbo said one of the smartest things I've heard anybody say, we don't know who the Antichrist is going to be. Satan doesn't know when the end of time is going to be. So Satan has to have people in place to be the Antichrist while, uh, you know, or when, when the time comes. So there are many against Christ, but I think someday there will be the Antichrist and uh, you know, the, the one that, that works in lying wonders and, and causes the whole world to follow after him. But the early warning is, many will come in Christ's name and deceive many. That happened in the first hundred years of the church. I think we're going to see a greater number, or another number, of, uh, a significant number, of false Christs and false prophets rising up during the end of time. Um, and it seems like, if we look at, you know, again, being kind of our nation-centered, uh, we seem to have a lot of uh, false Christs out there. Uh, churches, and not, not to say that everyone in those churches is deceived, we have mega churches led by uh, kind of maniacs, not, not Christian people. Uh, they're, they're serving their own, their own selves and not serving God. So the doctrine that they teach, there's, uh, there's friends we have that they, they're growing the church and, and they're putting in deacons that don't even know what the Bible says. And, you know, what, what are you headed up to? That's, that's, you know, if, you're, if you're not following the basics of Scripture, are you, are you really a church? Um, so we need to be on guard, following truth. We need to be aware of what's going on around us. And when we see the events happen, we need to be cautious not to fall into the traps of the world around us. Uh, I, I went to look. Uh, let's see. Well, somewhere written down. And I think it, I thought I wrote them on the notes for the message today, but you know what? They may not be there. I wrote down a bunch of names of folks who uh, thought the, uh, the end of time has come, just in, just in our lifetimes. Like here, I, I see it here now. It's under my Bible. Uh, many people, many believers, many religious people are interested in the end times and care about when the end will be. In my lifetime, there's been dozens. Here's some of them. And this isn't my lifetime, but it resurfaced in 1910. Anybody want to go out on a limb and guess what happened in 1910? Alice Common. Alice Common. Common. Oh, yeah. And again in 1986, every 76 years. They saw the comet coming in 1910 and said, This must be the end of the world. It's going to come closer than it ever has. It's going to hit the earth. Boom. End of time. Guess what? Didn't happen. Uh, 
True Way by Han Ming Chen, March 25th, 1988. Going to be the end of the world. Harold Camping, May 11th, 2011. Didn't happen, did it? The Mayan Apocalypse. That's one I remember right, right away. December 21st, 2012. Why is the world going to end that day? Because the Mayan calendar ended. And if the Mayan calendar ended, that's going to be the end of everything. And there's been others. Others before, others after. Uh, and believe it or not, like 666. They thought that's going to be the end of the world because, you know, that's the, the devil's number then is 1666 because it didn't happen in 666. So there's been predictions from almost the beginning of the church until today of when the end of time is going to be. And I think it's wise that we listen to uh, Bill's Bohr, and you may know this quote already, it's very hard to predict the future, or it's very hard to predict, especially the future. <laughs> So I can't stand up here and tell you, here's when Christ is going to come. But I can tell you what Christ told his disciples and what we need to know as his church today. First off, know the truth. There's a lot of error out there, but error is refuted with truth. So we need to know the truth. We need to be aware. Um, I'm not as aware as I'd like to be of all the falsehood that's out there. And the, the thing about falsehood is you never can be aware of all of it because there's so much. Now, I would have never heard of the, uh, what is it, Han Ming Chen prediction. I think he's not the one that tried to poison the folks in the subway in China, was he? I think that was an end-of-timer kind of guy in China. But, but, but we need to be aware of what's going on around us get our hands, heads out of the sand, look around and see that God's word is being fulfilled, that there are wars, rumors of wars, there's famines. That's another thing to look up. If you watch our news in the United States, where are the famines occurring right now? From our news, do you know if there's any famines occurring anywhere? Africa. In Africa. In what parts of Africa? Is this a pretty big continent? Nigeria. Nigeria? The big one is Yemen. But, yeah. you know, of all the things going on, if you watch just the, our news, you, it's not very big news. Uh, Yemen is, fire, is, is a terrorist nation. They're firing missiles over Saudi Arabia, and Saudi Arabia is blockading their ports. So there's a, there's a great famine in Yemen. And there's a great famine in... Uh, Sudan, South Sudan, I think. So, and that's because Muslims are fighting Christians there and trying to starve them out. But we need to be aware. We need to look around and find out where all these things are going on. And then we need to make sure we don't misunderstand. I think one of the problems that we run into is we, we want to be healthy. We want to be smart. But I can't... No one knows the hour. But I think I need, I need to read that. So... Back to Mark 13. I think he gets into that. In verse 24 it says, But in those days, after the tri that tribulation, so there's that other tribulation, the sun will be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. So at the end of the great tribulation, there's going to be some horrendous events, even more than, way more than the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. And then, then shall I see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. There won't be any question that this is the Christ, because he is coming in power and glory. And he shall send his angels and gather together the elect from the four winds, even from the uttermost parts of the earth, to the uttermost parts of heaven. And then this is the being aware, this is being uh, informed and looking around. It says, now learn the parable of the fig tree. When your branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves, you know the summer is near. So you, in like manner, when you shall see these things come to pass, know that it is near, even at the door. Verily I say unto you, that this generation, this age, shall not pass till all these things be done. And as a matter of fact, 
in the early church, how long did it take them to get the gospel to the whole known world? Within a hundred years, the gospel had gone out to the whole world. Were there wars in that time? The Roman Empire failed. Uh, were there famines in that time? Yes. We know about the one in Jerusalem where they were starving and they had to collect money and send, send it to them. So, what are we waiting for for Christ's return? Christ's return. That's all this, this led. So, if you're in the parable of the fig tree and you see these things happening, you know the time is near. Uh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. And this is the wisdom. This is where we need to understand and interpret correctly. But that day and that hour knows no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father, which creates its own kind of difficulties in our understanding. Isn't God the Father and God the Son the same person? So how can God know and not the Son know? Well, I don't know if I can explain it well enough to make it clear, but they know. Christ knows, but he's deferring to the Father to say it is time, which goes to Jewish uh, wedding tradition, and that is the Father tells the Son when the wedding should begin. Take heed, watch, and pray, for we do not know, says you do not know, we do not know when that time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking for a journey, who left his house, and he gave authority to his servants. Who are his servants? I'm looking at it. We what? We are his servants. He gave authority to us. We are in charge here now. He gave authority to his servants and to every man his work. Every one of his servants he gave a job to and commanded the porter to watch. Watch you, therefore, for you know not when the master of the house comes, at evening, at midnight, or at cock crowing, or in the morning. Let's come in suddenly you find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all. This is his last. Here's the conclusion of the whole matter. One word he says unto them. And this is the word for us today. And that is watch. So Phyllis, if you come up now, we'll have an invitation. Uh, you know, it's, prophecy is neat. And I think folks like for very definite things to be said, like, you know, this event happened with that, and those events line up with this, and, well, some of them, sometimes they do. But wisdom says we still don't know the time, so we need to be watching. We need to be waiting, be aware, knowing that it could be any moment. Uh, earthquakes. Uh, you know, the, uh, let's see, during the time of Pilate, I forget now what year, but there was an earthquake in Rome that just rattled everything. Uh, caves collapsed. It, it, was, it was a terrible earthquake. And so, you know, are, are there more earthquakes now than there used to be? Well, I've, I've seen it both ways, but earthquakes are going to happen. Uh, it's getting nearer. The final, the final word for us is to watch. So uh, if you would stand and turn to page 315.